Welcome. This presentation is about the future green space on 119th Street North. The site is located south of Ridgecrest Park between McKay Creek and 119th Street North. The subject property encompasses three parcels totaling approximately 37.5 acres with a five acre stormwater retention pond in the northwest corner of the property. The site is not level. The southwest side of the site sits about 12 feet higher than the east side. The community expressed interest in repurposing the property into green space. 40 years ago, the site was used to dispose of construction and demolition debris. Today, the site is vacant and sometimes used by the Pinewood Cultural Park for overflow parking. The county has American Rescue Plan Act funds, or ARPA funds, to complete site remediation. We must meet state environmental guidelines. This presentation will share information about the project. The site has a long history of uses, but most importantly for our discussion today, the property was used as a disposal site for construction and demolition debris from 1973 to 1981. Pinellas County retained engineers to complete the site design. The entire site will be regraded to improve drainage and support reuse of the site as green space. Making the whole site more level will make this a much more useful open space. There will be a 300 space grass parking lot at the southwest end of the site, ADA parking spaces, and a shuttle bus pickup and drop off area. The parking area is on the edge to maximize the green space. Finally, a fence will be installed around the retention pond because of the steep slopes. This aerial image from 2023 shows that the site is currently vacant. It has been vacant since 2001. Nevertheless, because of the historical use of the property as a disposal site, the county must follow guidelines from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to redevelop and reuse it. The county has already done a lot to move forward on this project. In 2022, the county hired a consultant firm to complete environmental assessments and create a rehabilitation plan for the site. Soil borings and test pits showed wood and construction materials underground to a depth of about 25 to 30 feet. This is what we expected to find. The area you see here that is reddish brown on this photo shows where the buried debris is located. All the waste is contained on site and underground. The county's consulting firm used test pits, shown by red dots, waste delineation location, shown by green dots, and monitoring wells, shown by blue dots, to analyze soil and groundwater respectively. Additionally, the surface water from the pond was tested. Impacts to soils on site are limited and meet the state's requirements for a closed disposal site. Any soil that is graded or disturbed will be resampled. The county will ensure that soil tests meet the Florida Department of Environmental Protection's requirements for future green space use. Dissolved solids found in the water are not expected to be a concern for human or environmental health. Residents receive drinking water from a municipal water supply. Pinellas County Utilities. Groundwater flows west toward McKay Creek. Long-term monitoring of surface and groundwater will be ongoing at this site. The third issue identified in environmental assessment is the presence of methane gas in the ground at the site. The most important thing to know is that no methane gas has been detected in the air. Methane gas is produced when organic materials break down. Methane is an odorless gas that is combustible at certain levels. As construction materials decompose, methane gas accumulates underground. Methane concentrations trapped underground exceed state criteria for the planned green space in some areas of the site. The green dots on this image show methane gas concentrations underground that are below regulatory limits. Yellow dots indicate locations underground where methane concentrations exceed limits. It is important to note that no methane has been detected in the air. These types of debris disposal sites usually produce most of their methane in the first 30 to 40 years. 
this site should be producing methane at a low rate at this point. Even so, the county is required to install a gas mitigation system to remove the gas safely. The gas mitigation system is shaded purple and shown by the black dots and black dashed lines on this image. It is located where the highest concentrations of methane gas have been found. What is a gas mitigation system? It's a system of underground pipes and above ground vents that provide a controlled pathway for methane gas to travel through the ground and into the air at safe levels. It mitigates or takes care of the risk of the gas. This is a trusted and proven method that has been used for decades. Here are a few photos of gas mitigation systems being installed at other sites. The primary elements of a gas mitigation system are trenches with perforated gas collection pipes and vent risers. The gas seeps into the underground pipes and escapes through the vent risers. The photo on the right shows gravel and the risers tied to the perforated pipe. This is called a passive system because the gas travels naturally through the pipes and vents without a motorized fan. These pictures show some typical passive vent risers. These vents are connected to the buried perforated gas collection pipes that you saw on the last slide. They provide the path of least resistance for gases to vent to the atmosphere. Passive vents do not involve electrical or mechanical components to remove the gas. They rely on the natural rising characteristic of methane. A ventilator such as a turbine, shown in the photo on the left, or aura ventilator, shown in the photo on the right, help draw gases into the atmosphere. We are looking into ways to make the vents blend in with a natural environment. As part of the project, we will also install the equipment that would be needed for what is called an active system. An active gas mitigation system uses a blower to pull gas through the pipes. Based on the age of the site and the concentration of gas found, we think it is very unlikely that we would have to turn on an active system. But if monitoring data indicates that methane gases exceed safe levels, the passive system will be converted to an active system. These pictures show components of an active system. The active system consists of a blower skid, condensate sump, and piping that is directed to a nearby sanitary sewer. It functions like a vacuum, actively pulling gases toward the blower and a single vent. The blower will be housed in an enclosure to protect it. In summary, the county plans to convert the 37.5 acre property on 119th Street North that was a previous construction and demolition disposal site to a parking area and future green space. To make this happen, the county needs to first rehabilitate the property in accordance with environmental guidelines. Rehabilitation of the site will include regrading the site and constructing a passive gas mitigation system to safely remove methane from the ground. Once the site has been regraded, we will test the soil to make sure it meets environmental requirements. We will conduct ongoing monitoring of groundwater, surface water, and methane concentrations to ensure safe use of the site. After the project has been completed and all testing meets state requirements, the site can be open to the public. We expect to have the design completed by the end of March. Then it will take time to evaluate the bids and select a contractor to complete the work. We expect to start construction in a little over a year and finish by May of 2026. Francine Ocampo is our project manager for this future green space. You may reach out to her via the contact information shown on the slide. Thank you for viewing our presentation.